we will come off camera and we'll start to share the slides. So I'm Murda McCormick. I'm based within HMRC in Edinburgh. I work as a compliance manager in that role. I've done quite a bit of interviewing. Um, I've also done interviews in the past and I've also to join the civil service, which is nearly 18 years ago. I had to go through an interview. Um, so from all of that experience, I can join and look looking forward to being with you today. And over to you, Shola. Thank you very much, Muda. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, can I just say thank you for coming on the call today? Um, we do appreciate your time today. My name is Shola Okunade. I am working under the umbrella of um, CSJ, which is Customer Service Group, um, within debt management, debt resolution team, as a team, um, team leader. And um, I've been joining Muda to co-present the presentation skills and I'm sure you are going to be, um, you are going to get something from it today. So looking forward to uh, to hear your comments and to, to flow along today. Thank you for, for having us. Uh, thank you, Shola. So I'm just sort of going to come off camera and I'm hoping that the slides are starting to come through. So I'm hoping Hoping they are, and uh, trusting they are nice and visible. So I shall go on to the next slide. Uh, these are introducing ourselves, and as you can see, they were developed for an operation delivery profession event as well. So. What, to, what today is about, well, maybe I'll also give you a background wh why we're along here. I've sort of developed this session from a session that previous colleagues did and have delivered it in the Edinburgh region. And I knew the Edinburgh region uh, race network lead, and she asked myself to sort of come along and do this presentation to them. And also felt I was like a co-presenter and Shola from the network agreed to sort of do me. And as they've been so popular, we saw that the Civil Service Race Forum were doing this presentation. So me and Shola came along and said, let's come along and deliver, see if you'd be interested in this presentation. So this is how, how we've come along and be along today. And thanks for Justin for saying yes, do come along. So today's session, it, it'll help you make the best impression at interview. It is based on our HMRC experience, but. I, in HMRC, we use success profiles, which is a civil service um, method, so it should cut across all of that. It's not really a practice session. It's not going to give you model answers, but it will give you some tips, advice and things to consider. And we'll sort of give you some practical tips, how to prepare for it, what happens at the interview and sort of next steps. So what is an interview. Now, I know there's quite a few sort of people on the call. However, I'm going to ask if any of you'd like to put ideas into the chat about what you think an interview is. I may not be able to get to everyone's comments, but hopefully we get a few comments. Please feel free to pop stuff into the chat. Thank you. So it is, you could say it is like a test, like an exam. Also a way to assess candidate suitability for a role, whether you're suitable for the post. Thank you. There's also the conversation there. And I like the idea about a two way conversation. Um, yeah, you mentioned it, it can be stressful. Uh, and also the opportunity to show your best self before getting a new job and show off what you've got to offer the organisation. Uh, and also, do you want the job when you find out more? Yes, that's a good point. <laughs> a nightmare can be. Um, you know, opportunity to show you how you can add value a question and answer session. Oh, and I like that last one, judging the interview panel as well as being interviewed as well. So there's a lot a lot of comments there, a lot of things, a lot of similar, similar themes. So I shall 
Sorry, I haven't got to everyone's comments. However, it is to say to supplement your written application. Um, and for me, that was me. When I, I'm, I've been hiring, I've always wanted to sort of check that there is results behind what the person can write. And that's for two reasons, because sometimes people can write well, and but actually don't have the, the actual substance behind it or even can often become sometimes people they won't really shine on an application have done done well enough to get through but don't really shine and actually an interview gives them a chance really to shine and really demonstrate their skills it is a, as you've mentioned it is a conversation to see the most suitable person for the job because most often selectors won't know you so it's a chance to get you to meet it's also the chance for the selectors to evaluate um, your skills, your experience, your knowledge, to check how suitable a person is for the job. And also it's a two way conversation. And it allows you to gain information about the job that is not available through other sources. So that means that you can find out a bit more quite often who's on the interview panel is the job holder, the vacancy holder, and there's the person that may well be the manager of a successful candidate. So you can find out about the person, find out the job. And I can remember coming out from at least one interview many years ago, coming out thinking that is an organisation I do not want to work for. I'm now going to pass over to Shola, who's going to sort of tell you about behaviours and strengths. Thank you very much, Mother. Um, can you can you all hear me? Can you still hear me? You're coming through clear to me, Shola. Right, that's good. Thank you very much. So we're going to be talking about the behaviors and um, the strengths. It will be worth concentrating on the difference between the behaviors and the strength questions. The most common types of questions you will get are the behaviors and the strength based um, questions. However, you may be able to, you know, um, however, you may be asked questions on your experiences or your technical skills. Behaviors questions are the actions and the activities that you do which results in, in, you know, in an effective performance in your previous job, current job, or, you know, while you are volunteering. So behavior-based interview involves questions that require you to provide real-life examples as the basis of your answers. Behaviors may be assessed alongside other elements sometimes, especially the success profile to get you, you know, more rounded pictures of your suitability for the role. This means they are looking at how specifically um, you've done something that makes you suitable for the role you are applying for. When you think deeply on the previous things, previous things you, you've done, I am sure you'll be able to write something on your past experiences that can uh, match up with any of those behavioral competencies that they are, they are asking you to provide. So the second part is the situational one. What you will do, you know, their questions will be surrounding what you would do if you are faced with a certain situation they will basically give you a situational scenarios. So they would uh, paint a scenario for you and they will ask you to tell them what you would do or what you've done in those certain situational scenarios they have put across to you. Next slide, please. So strength-based questions allow the interviewer to find out whether you are a good fit for the organization or whether you are a good fit for the job. Um, it is to identify your strengths, you know, to match their own um, capacity that they've, that, that they've got. And you need to tailor everything. You are hitting all the highs 
of what success profile, what they have said they are looking for. You are matching your own experience, what you've done. You are matching it with what um, they are looking for, giving them a, a suitable picture that you're best for that role. Um, in an interview, strength is assessed not just by what you say, but how you say it. Because they believe that if an activity flows naturally from you, from your own natural strengths, um, then you will be more suited for that role. So let your passion, your energy come out when you are talking about either behavioral um, questions or situational questions. And usually they will give you a warm up questions um, to set you down. Um, the one more question, you know, will usually be a positive one. It is the science, so you have an opportunity to talk about um, anything and mostly an area of strength. The idea of the warm up is to understand your normal style, and this is so we we can baseline the score correctly, you know, so that we in the in the warm up session we would see who are into those naturally enthusiastic fellow. We will see who are reserved. So those warm up questions are like an icebreaker to you know, tell us this this person is a reserved person or this person is a bubbly person. So every question, make sure you are shining through through it all. The strength questions are asked in the order and manner to each candidate. You know, like um, give us a short a short answer uh, to what you've done before. Make sure you are listening and you are doing according to what they say. If they say, explain, explain fully. Don't give too short an answer where you can miss out points and miss out marks. Explain. When they say, give us a brief summary, then make it brief. Sometimes a strange question may seem to be similar to a behavioral question. Don't worry. It is it's, it's testing different aspects. So if an example that you've given before is, um, is suitable for behavioral, then you can also use it. So some something like um, as part of your answer, one time when I, you know, when you let's say they're asking you, tell us when you have motivated a team or where you have motivated somebody to do their job better. And you've already used your competencies in behavioral. So you can just um, link it up and say, yeah, just as I have mentioned in uh, mentioned previously, this is the scenario that I've, I've got. I remember this time. So you can use the same um, thing if you know how to tailor it to suit um, that same purpose. There are links that has been um, put into this presentation today. We are going to be sharing that link um, at the end of the day. So you could have um, all, yes, so all we are discussing, you could have them and you could click on the link and then, um, yeah, take things off from there. Mother, can I um, hand over to you? Yeah, thank you, Shola. And yes, the, the link, uh, I'm sure Justin will be sharing, we can share the slides afterwards and we will sort of share the, just sort of slightly change the slides since we last sort of discussed Justin, so I'll share these at, at the end um, with yourself. Anyway, coming back to this, so you're starting, you've heard about sort of behaviours, which are sort of the longer question, the strengths, which are short, snappy, snappy sort of questions. Uh, so now we're going to sort of think, OK, how do you maybe sort of start preparing for an interview? What are the golden rules? So one of the things is find out as much as you can about the job. Usually when there's an application, it says, uh, if you want further information, please contact the vacancy holder. It's always worthwhile doing doing that. I've quite often, when I've been applying for roles, I quite often just make contact with the vacancy holder 
uh, to find out more about the jobs and maybe what's in, in there, or if there's particular sort of questions about the job that I want to answer, so that it's two things. One, I know it's the right job for me to apply for. However, the other thing, if I understand more about the job, then what I can do is I can use that to help put down what I put in my application form, or particularly what I put down in interviews, or even some having some good questions to answer at interview. Also, you will probably already have used some examples from your sort of data bank in your written application. Quite often you'll be asked to maybe expand on what you've put in there. You may even be asked to have additional examples. However, gather examples of your skills, your knowledge, your experience, and link them to what is required of the job. Have a look at the advert. Think about what would the panel members really want to know? What would you want to sort of know as well? And I'd always sort of recommend if it's for behaviour examples, having more than one example for each behaviour. For when I was applying many years ago, when I was applying, I had a sort of data bank of about between eight to 10 examples, which I could work into behaviours. And that meant when I went along to an interview, if well, I actually, use example when I went along to sort of civil search to join uh, HMRC, I was asked a question. I thought, oh no, that's my my main example. For that competency is not suitable. Uh, I'll use my backup example. So therefore, by having these backup examples, it helped me. Also, actually, what happened for me was I was asked another question, which none of my examples suited. I had to sort of choose something from the top of my head. I got through. So sometimes, even though you prepared you'll have had experience and things that you can pull on. Another tip is practice, practice, practice. And one of the things is if you practice to make sure you can see things as behaviours, you've usually got about eight minutes to, to sort of speak. If you can practice seeing examples going to sit between six to seven minutes, then what that means is you're not going to sort of run out. And it helps you sort of feel comfortable. And also with a behaviour question is if you um, practice them and if you sort of finish within like six or seven minutes, you leave a sort of minute or two for questions. The idea about questions is they're trying to build your marks up. So if you leave space for any sort of questions, then what that means, it gives a chance for something that the interviewers have felt that you've missed out. They can ask you that question, which you can then help build your scores up. So how do you prepare for behaviour based examples? Well, what you can do is you can sort of take notes into into the interview. However, it's cue cards, so it's it's like prompts. So it's like I'd say a cue card is like a postcard sized piece of uh, paper or card, which on it you have notes about your example. The idea with that is you use prompts rather than for example, so you don't read it out. And I see cue cards are used for two things. They're used for that moment when your brain goes blank, that you can go and glance them to remind yourself. Or another thing you can do is if you've gone through your talk through your example, you can also give your cue card a quick, a quick glance and sort of see, oh, was there anything key that I've missed that you want to bring out? So so tell a story that supports requirements of the job. It doesn't have to be a work example. It can be outside of work. One of my former staff members, he got his promotion using examples of what he did as an army reservist. He was one of the things he was responsible for was bringing in bales of dollars into Iraq after the Iraq war. So it can be suitable outside work. Yeah. The STAR format, that is situation, task, action and result. If you use that format, then it helps you sort of prevent rambling. And if you use roughly about, round about maybe should we say a minute for the situation and task, because you really want to concentrate most of your time on the actions, what you did to get the result. And make sure the example is right for the level and for the, for the job. 
as one colleague once said, you can make a behaviour example out of making a cup of tea, however, it isn't the right level. So look at the job and make sure your examples are to the, the right level for the grade, the type of the job, and are suitable for the for the job as well. Um, because examples in HMRC, we've got a lot of compliance case workers. So if you're going for if people are going for a compliance case working role, then they may want to use quite examples about, about compliance case working role. However, that person said, oh, actually, there's a management role I'm really interested in, and use the same compliance case working roles. They may not score as well as if they sort of thought, well, OK, what's an example that shows a bit of leadership, something that's like, like the role as well. So make sure your examples are kind of like the role and are suitable. Also, I think examples should be recent or should or most examples should be recent. Though with civil service behaviour, say, it doesn't matter how old your examples are. I, I tend to agree with that, that if you've got a good example, you never use it. However, if all your examples are old, then the question is, if something that hasn't come recently, the question may come, the thought may come back is, oh, wait a minute, is this person's glory days behind them? However, there are a couple of ways of getting around that. If, for example, you've got all, all your old examples, but you're still, your best things are that you did were quite old, but you're still doing things, there's two ways. There's one way, for example, you could actually sort of start off your answer by saying, talking about something recent, mention something recent, but say about an old example, like tell me about a time you had to do something challenging. It could be well, one of the challenging times was when I did an office reorganisation uh, six months ago. However, I actually found it really challenging the office reorganisation I did when I was this dumb. So you're saying you're doing something just now, but you're actually going back to the past. Or a Brucey bonus. The other way about doing it is your example is you're talking maybe you're, you're talking about your office reorganisation about four or five five years ago, and you're saying. And from the organisation, I learned that the importance of sharing a plan early with key stakeholders right at the start. So when I did my office reorganisation uh, four months ago, I actually shared the plans with my managers at a special meeting before we started. So what you see, you did something in the past, you learned something and you applied it just now. And that's just a way about sort of saying you've got a really good example, but actually saying you're still doing the same things. Also make sure you think about the level to include as well, because some people get bogged down with including lots of low level detail, then don't have time to adequately cover things. Or people may think, well, I've got to say this happened and this happened, this happened. You don't have to tell everything else. You don't have to sort of say, for example, oh, if there are sort of three key meetings, you may not have to sort of say deal with all, the, all three key meetings. You could say we are sort of three key meetings which made these decisions and just sort of sum summarise it. Think about what is important. What is important that shows what you did. Think also about, think about what the questions you might, you think you might be asked. Look at the advert and just think about what they're wanting. Think about what sort of things that they would want to do. Also, usually at an interview, you're usually given a chance to ask a, uh, any sort of questions. So do try and sort of think about questions to ask at the end of the interview, such as things people often ask, what the challenges of the job, what are the development opportunities, what the promotion opportunities are. They are the sort of the questions that make you ask, sort of mark you out as a good candidate. And the tip that I got as well uh, is having a pick me statement. And a pick me statement is some is basically something to tell the interviewers what you can offer them in relation to the job. You may have heard of something called an elevator pitch. It's kind of like that. And it's to use at the end where if there are any questions or you ask if there's anything else you want to add. And it's about a short statement to summarize what you can bring to the job and why why you want it. For example, I'm just going to do something on the top of my head. Uh, yes, I have got Yes, I'm really interested in this role for senior manager. I've had over three years of frontline management experience. I've also covered from a manager recently. And so I believe I've got the right experience for this role. OK, that's off the top of my head. It's a short statement. It's that sort of thing, two or three statements. 
this pick me statement it's not going to guarantee you're going to get get the job however what it does do is it may give you that age the person gave me the tip said that she when she was applying for a job it was a pick me statement that just gave her the age over the other candidate there must have been just sort of level pegging also other hot tip is practice and do mock interviews if you've got an interview coming up uh, see if you can get a colleague a mentor a manager to actually give you a mock interview and i've done some sort of mock interviews with with many colleagues and i've seen that it does help i've heard sort of reports of a few colleagues that have helped and i've sort of seen and given them sort of tips and they've come back and said they've passed the interview or other colleagues that haven't even passed they, they've done well so it's important you do that and maybe the other tip is I remember one of my previous managers, he went and did a mock interview. He said when he went to his mock interview, he went in and he fell to pieces. Uh, and then it took him time to sort of recover and get on and did okay with that. However, because he went in and fell to pieces there, he did okay in his interview. So we've covered behaviors, we've covered, we've covered strengths as well. One other common question needs to be asked is about experience. So I'd like to sort of cover how we can prepare for experience questions. So I've got a, a jokey mock advert here. So this is a, a mock advert. As you can see, it's got some essential criteria and desirable. Desirable criteria are those which are used in a tie break situation. That is, if a candidate's equal in everything else, then you sort of look and see if, if one of the candidates has a desirable criteria, they get the role. So what we are looking for, we're looking for a new James Bond. So as you see, it's got, what's the role? It says some of the essential criteria we want. So the question is, so looking at this advert and maybe knowing from your knowledge about James Bond, what sort of things would you want to ask the person who's applying for the role? It's like, what sort of experience would you want to know? What sort of experience would you want a person who's going to be a secret agent in UJ's bond have. So what sort of qu so basically I'd like to ask you in the chat to put down any sort of questions you think you would want to ask a new sort of J a person applying to be a Jay's Bond to understand their experience. Oh yeah, hi Michael. Tell me about a time someone tried to kill you. <laughs> Quite a good way, sort of trying to sort of see about, you know, maybe how they've got the good fighting skills. Yeah, and the follow up, how did you get out of it? Yeah, like ability, how to get a tight spot. So thanks, Sarah. Knowledge and use of an array of weapons. And Olivia, another question about how you got how to get out of a tight tight spot. Yeah, possibly. How do you look in a tuxedo? Uh, uh, thank you, Francis. Can you tell me an example of when you're under pressure and how you dealt with it? How did you deal with it? Asking about how time to use new software, learning new device. How do you take your martini? <laughs> how, yeah, how do you work to others to get the job done? But delegation skills. Uh, about martial arts, what belt do you have? Tell time you use technology to achieve your objectives. Uh, SWAT skills are quite a right. I'm to be a Jane Bond. That's that's an interesting one. Yes, it is about maybe asking sort of person sort of uh, to sort of think about okay what skills they have. Mm. So I think okay, it's a wee bit jokey. It's a wee bit jokey there. However, there's a serious point behind this. You've looked at this advert. And you've used the knowledge what you know about the job, what you know about the person, what's the job advert saying, and to sort of bring up some some questions to ask about the person, about their exp experience. And the idea of that is just to get you thinking, well, if you can do this for this, if you're applying for any other job, 
you would be able to actually sort of try and guess what the experience questions would be. So, how to prepare for experience questions? So, look at the job rule, look at the description, the essential criteria, and the desirable criteria. And think, make, think of what you did in the past that makes the essential criteria. What have you done that was similar to the role? You may already have thought some of that stuff up when you did your personal statement. And also, if the example, for example, about experience, example is experience of working with customers, to explain this, then think about times you work with internal external customers. Think of a few examples. And what I would suggest if you look at each element of essential criteria, think of you've got an example for at least one example for each bullet point of essential criteria. You may want to think about desirable the criteria, however, this is only used as a sort of tie break. So if you do not have a desirable criteria, then do not worry. But also, if you've had something analogous or similar to desirable criteria, for example, in the desirable criteria, experience of analysing financial records. Now, you may not have ever analysed financial records. However, you do the books for a local charity. So that's similar to analysing financial records, then using that. And also with the essential criteria, if you've got something that is similar to what the essential criteria is, then don't be afraid to sort of use it because it will have those skills. Also, do listen to the question. Experience questions can be more general. So maybe asking your experience of something. So unlike a behaviour where you're telling one's story, this one may be more about giving a gen uh, more general description experience. So here it is, as you see, it's a question, what is your experience of leading teams? So it's not as a sense of talking about leading one team, but what is your experience? So you may be sort of talking quite a bit about your general experience, plus maybe one or two specific examples. For example, I have lots of experience in leading teams. I have led teams uh, in uh, both in my work as well as a scout leader in my personal life. Uh, example, example, example. Plus one of the most challenging times when I was leading a team was when a team was really demotivated because of changes in their tasks. So, I, so I, what I did to motivate them, da, 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 da. So that's the example of some general, some specific. Do listen to the questions. Do give concrete examples of your, your experience. Um, and last thing I'd say is don't worry about experience questions. You know what your experience is. You know what you've done in the past. So we want to find out what you've done. So it's OK to take time to think. And if you have the right experience, you will be able to sort of talk about it. You have that knowledge. So if something comes up and you haven't prepared example, you may very well be able to sort of think for a minute to think, ah, I've got this experience and be able to sort of talk about it or talk about, friend about this. So I'm passing over to Shola now for the day before. Thank you very much, Mudo. So you have done all the preparation. Um, you've put all your minds together. You've written your competences. Um, and everything that we've discussed. Now you have just a few hours left, the day before the interview. Make sure you have everything ready, everything you need. You want to make sure that you are feeling fresh and you are ready for the interview. Make sure you get enough night's sleep so you are not feeling tired. And then so you start to forget all your preparation. Plan what you want to wear for that day. Make sure you have smart but comfortable clothing. Check them to ensure that they still fit well, especially with lockdown. You know, <laughs> our go to former clothes now are getting too tight for us, especially somebody like me. 
So ensure that that clothes you have in your mind that you want to wear for the interview, try it out. Make sure it, it, it still fits you. And don't wear large jewelries that would distract the interviewer or you have coins, change, it lose change in your pockets that are jangling around when you are nervous and distracting your interviewers. If you are doing a telephone or um, video interview, ensure you check the equipment you are using the night before the day. Check that it is compatible with the system that is being used. This will give you plenty of time to resolve issues rather than having to sort it out last minute and then you are nervous for the entire time of your um, interview. Prepare yourself. I remember the last time um, previously when I had an interview, I would have messed up so badly if I had not checked the IT equipment. Um, if I had not called my, my son to check for me, it would have been a disaster because it wasn't it wasn't um, matching the what the IT uh, that I was using. So it's better you check all those things and prepare your examples for the last time that night to ensure that they are still fresh in your mind. My last interview, I actually got my children to sit down uh, like the panel <clears throat> and I was reading my competencies um, you know, to them. I asked them to judge me. Was I fluent? Uh, was I stammering? What would they, they should rate me? What would they give me? And I also used the mirror. So after reading my competencies, I will stand in the mirror and I will read it uh, many times until it sink in very well without me missing any important part of it. So please don't underestimate the importance of getting all you need a day before. Don't leave it to the day. Get everything ready a day before because little things like this can destabilize you or bring your energy down and you don't want that to happen. When we go back to normal and we go back to face-to-face -face interview, or you are, you are already starting face-to-face -face interview, ensure that you have directions to where you are going. Um, think, try to plan your journey. Are you going by public transport or are you driving? How many minutes will it take you to the place? How many minutes will the public transport um, take to get to the place? What if, plan for emergencies, what if, what if you miss your bus? What if um, your ride isn't available? So plan for every uh, emergency that could happen so you are not missing your interview because these simple little things can hype your nervousness and just make you forget things that you, you, know, you have put in your mind. And also, it's also good to arrive early I would say 10 minutes before the time, uh, try to get yourself in, settled in 10 minutes before the actual interviews uh, starts. And most organizations will ask for that. You want to make sure that you are, you are looking good, you're feeling fresh, you are ready for your interview, as well as, um, you know, since you know you've done all those things, there shouldn't be much, much panic if you have followed the steps. Next slide, please. So, what to expect? There is likely to be more than one interviewer that will be interviewing you. And this is so that there is consistency in, in what um, we do. Usually, there are a couple of minutes of introduction before the interview itself will start. This is um, to help break the eyes a little bit, just like I have said before, to get you comfortable with, in the, with the interviewer, to get you settled, to get you uh, taking control of that nervousness. And also, is also another chance for uh, the interviewer to check 
their technology to ensure that everything is working okay. The interviewer may not always maintain eye contact, so they might not, both of them might not be looking into your eyes. Usually, um, either one person is taking notes and the other person is asking the, the question. So with more than one interviewer, one person will be concentrating on everything you are saying and ensuring that they are capturing it. It um, means she's writing it down and the other person is concentrating on how are you projecting yourself? How are you selling yourself? How are you matching up the questions um, with the competences or with the story that you are telling? Um, don't forget, when you prepare enough before the day, it gives you a edge off. You are not going to be panicking and disoriented. It would help you to be coordinated and then it will give you a very good platform to sell yourself and shine. I will now invite Mudo to take us further into the next slide. OK, thank you, Shola. Thank you. So this this sort of star sort of performance. So um, it is about at the interview sort of speaking clearly and sort of take control of your nerves, which is easier said than done. However, interviewers will understand you can be nervous. Um, and also, excuse me, <coughs> cough a wee bit. Yeah. Also, um, you know, if you're feeling really nervous through, through during the interview, you can always take a sip of water to help you and also gives you time to think. You can also ask for the question to be repeated. And also do make sure that if you are unclear, ask for a question, ask for it to be repeated. And it's <coughs> and it's really important to make sure you understand what you're being asked and remember to answer the question you are asked. It is easy to answer what you've rehearsed and actually miss giving the key information that interviewers were asking about. A few times when I've been interviewing, I've been asking a question and it's almost like a, a recording sort of goes off, uh, off a sort of click. You can almost hear like almost a click going off of the person's thing and they start sort of repeating my tape recording. And quite often it's fine. However, because maybe you've not listened to the question and you may have missed something specific, and because missing that, you will not score as well as you could do. And the other thing I'd like to mention is that interviewers can be nervous too. You know, we really want to get the best out of you and we don't want you to, to let you down. And I think the other thing which may help you is it's not an interview, it's not like a star chamber thing, it's not like uh, The Apprentice where we're trying to sort of rip people to pieces. What we want, what, what, oh, let me say this, what I want when I'm interviewing someone is to, if I've got one role, then I want at least two people who get the job. And what that means is it means that I've got someone else, if, for example, the, per the person that, that did best, for whatever reason doesn't want the job, then I've got someone else that has done almost as good, just as good, that's met standard for the job that I can go for. Or if, for example, the, the first person has taken the job, I've got at least one person in reserve. If there's another job coming up, then they can uh, go on the sort of reserve list. And then if there's a similar job coming up, then the person can do it. So what we do, what we want people to succeed. So at the end of the interview, do ask uh, what the next steps in the recruitment process and ask when you're likely to hear, because then that helps so you don't have to be sitting around waiting for the waiting for the phone or the email to come in. Uh, also, it depends on those of you ask know what the next steps are, then you know if you need to prepare for anything else. Most commonly, I think the civil service that the interview uses the last sort of stage. Restate the interest in the role. Use your sort of pick me statement at this point. Thank the interviewers for seeing you and then reflect in the interview. The other thing I would sort of say is if you're on sort of video interview, telephone interview, 
make sure the interview has completely finished, everything switched off before you go, oh, thank God that's over. Because the last thing you want is your interviewers to sort of be hearing that. So I'm going to pass you over to Shola, who's going to tell you all about video interviews. Thank you very much, Moda. I was trying to look for my mouse. Right. Um, video interviews. They are now mostly common in HMRC. So consider whether the, the interview is live or if it is a pre-recorded one, they will tell you. This is to let you prepare uh, for what you should expect on that day. Use an IT that is com compatible for you and compatible with the system that you have been required to use. Ensure that you check again and again before the interview. Um, this is to make sure that you are avoiding any problem and you are avoiding going into a panic mode five minutes before the time. So you check the setup, the settings, the microphone and everything. Also be ready about 10 minutes. Um, you know, as we've already said, be ready like 10 minutes. Make sure that you have taken away any distraction like your phone, um, you've put down uh, notifications and things that could distract you and take you off course. Uh, why you are telling your story. Choose an appropriate location and check that you know your lightings are OK. Check your background has nothing that that wouldn't look nice to the interviewers. So take off things that shouldn't be seen by a third party. Check that your camera is at the same height level with your face. So you are not looking down or you are looking too high up. The panel members who aren't asking particular questions may have their own you know, camera turned off, but don't forget they are still there. So they are still there. They are still marking you. They are still uh, you know, checking you up. Um, if you are using an office chair, try to be calm. Try not to swing back and forth, back and forth, because that usually distracts your interviewers. And be careful um, with your pace. If you know you are a fast uh, speech person, try to slow down so that you are picking everything up. You are not rushing your words and you are dishing out and selling yourself in the best way that you could. Next slide, please. So, if you are successful, great. Any of the interview you go for is always important to think through after the interview. So think about what you have said and how you have come across to the interviewer. Think of what did you do well? What did you find difficult? How could you do better next time? I always like to do this most of the time. I don't think I've ever forgotten. If I go into any interview, whether it was favorable or I feel cool or I don't feel cool, I will take a pen and a paper and I will write down what I've done, what have I done well? What didn't I do well? How do I improve on that thing that I didn't do well? Which of the questions threw me off balance? How am I going to go, go back to that question and deal with that question and come back with a suitable answer? So find out as well, you know, what you did well, find out. You could ask, this will help your development in the next time that you you go in for an interview. 
Don't let pride get in your way. If you are not being successful, learn and move on. So try to fail forward. Don't fail backward. Learn and move on. If there are particular gaps in your skills and knowledge that you have yeah. identified, come here. Find um, opportunities to fill them in. Some good um, career pl planner advice that we could share is, you know, when a candidate is not successful in an application, ask for feedback. There is no crime in you asking for feedback. There's usually an email that is attached to some of the um, some of the vacancies. Email and say, please, thank you for you know having me on. Thank you for the interview time. Please, can I get a feedback on how I have performed so I can develop myself? So if the feedback identify your weakest um, competences, then put things in place to develop on that. Build on that, on that skill and sort out those things that didn't let you pass that time. So that the next time you are coming, you are coming with full force. You are coming with determination. You are coming with all answers. You are ready to be hired. You are ready to sell yourself. You are ready to showcase how good you are. You are ready to, to, you know, in your competences and what you say, you are ready to tell the interviewer that if you don't, if you don't have me, you might be missing something. So that could only come from you um, thinking about how you've done in your interview the last one you did, and you reflecting and preparing yourself for the next one. Um, thank you. I'll call Modo to take us into the next slide. OK, thank you, Shola. So some resources, again, this will be shared uh, afterwards. If you want to know a wee bit more about about interview skills and about the success profiles. If you go into civil service learning and search for interviewee skills and look for the one that's interviewee skills online, there are a few good resources there. There's a blended one which costs money. You don't want that. You want the, the online one. I also found online a colleague shared his tip, uh, examples of behaviour based questions. And also there's a selection of TED Talks, which are about things about to watch before a job interview. You can always have a look and select on those. The Guardian here had an article on calming interview nerves. Um, so you may find that of use. Also, other there are other sources where you can get advice about interviews, about all sorts of things. And I always think that university career services websites have good links to advice and interviews. You can just choose any of them. I've happened to choose Edinburgh University. It is mainly aimed for graduates. However, there are sort of lots of, sort of useful tips on there, things about assessment centres, about applications. So it's very well worth while using. It may be even useful uh, for yourselves if you sort of think some of you may be thinking actually applying outside the civil service as well. Could be some useful tips there. I found this blog from a YouTuber about preparing for video inter interviews. Uh, here I'm based in Scotland uh, and you know, Skills Development Scotland, that's a Scottish career service. They also have a section interviews as well. There may well be others in the other sort of uh, nations around the country. Uh, and finally, from myself and Shola, we would like to say thank you. Thank you for inviting us along and having us here. And I think hopefully with some of these tips that you shall be able to sort of go back, reflect, and you'll ace that interview, get the job that you really want, help to develop your career and build the capabilities. So I think we've got a few minutes if people have got any sort of questions. I shall come back on the camera and to stop stop sharing my screen as well. Uh, 
And it is lovely to see so, some notes. And I picked up some questions earlier on. However, there may be some questions that I have sort of missed from, from earlier. So I think, is there a hand went up for a second? It's gone back down again. Oh, wait a minute, there's a, there's a hand up. Uh, oh, gone back. Uh, Hi, uh, is, is it Fauza Malik? I'm sorry if I've got your name wrong there. Yeah, please feel free to shut up. Uh, this is the Hida. <laughs> sorry, uh, just trying to come off mute. Sorry, a bit delayed. Yep. So I'll make it super quickly. I just had an interview on Tuesday, which I managed to get on a reserve list for. I am still suffering, well, from, PT still suffering from PTSD. For the, yeah. for the after effects of that interview, um, yeah. because I had prepared an example uh, for which didn't fit to the question. And then obviously yeah. at the last minute kind of got flummoxed and just kind of yeah. brought something to mind. So in terms of uh, your recommendation, you recommend that for each behaviour, you should prepare at least two examples. But if you are in a scenario where none of them fit, what yeah. does one do? I mean, it's just kind of, you know, it's uh, it's very difficult. That's what I found anyway. So any suggestions? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, you, you've actually sort of showed that you thought from, from the back, from something from your mind, and you got a reserve list. So you <laughs> did well and get there. And yeah. I think it, Thank you. it's kind of what, what I'd almost sort of say is, it, it's that sort of thing is, do you mind if I just, you may sort of think, right, do you mind if I think, say a question, you may ask them to sort okay. of repeat the question again, yep. or it is that sort of thing, do you mind if I sort of think that, even some of the lines, you could even be honest, you could be saying, that's a good question, yep. and I'm not sure the examples I've got fully match that, so therefore, I'm just going to think if I've got something else I can do. Okay. Just sort of take, take that time to sort yeah, of think. take a breath. And just kind yeah. of compose yourself. I suppose that's the best the best thing to do. But yeah, yeah um, interviews in general are just a very difficult thing, and and are very subjective as well, aren't they? And they just kind of, you know, it depends on how you perform on the day. But yeah, all yeah. good. Thank you very much. The session was absolutely amazing. Definitely will be taking on a lot of the suggestions to my next interview as well. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Malik. Can I just quickly say one thing to what yes. you have just asked? So yes. um, if you are, are you a family um, person? I am, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Lots, so lots I things, believe yeah. that even as a family person, we have lots of um, experiences oh. that we, yes, that we gather as we are raising children, as yeah. we are looking after our, our parents or looking after anyone. So yeah. those things you've done, you could yeah. find to them to right. suit purpose. Yes. Okay. So that's, don't that's think good. you don't have experience. You do. Yeah. It's you thinking of which, how do I come? How do I say I've done this? Awesome. Thinking, yes. So I think you do have, even if it is a voluntary yeah. role, we do have loads. Just search through the archive of yeah. our brains and our mind. <laughs> that's the thing, is something. Yeah. So, so as a parent, we have lots of transferable skills that we could use in a, as an example. At I tell you that. I tell you yeah, that. Yeah. Do, definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're so. welcome. And I see I've got a question also from Tayub Shafiq. Sorry again if I've mispronounced your name. No problem. <laughs> Hi, guys. Yeah, so in terms of my question, guys, um, it's all to do with eye contact, guys. So essentially, I'm mm. um, doing an interview um, well, in terms of the interview guys, um, uh, in terms of eye contact, uh, should you be really making eye contact with the interviewer the whole time, or or, or is it okay to kind of look away here and there? Uh, Question. Yeah, I, th I think it's it's kind of sort of natural. Um, but usually in sort of uh, video sort of calls, you know, we're not looking at sort of people. Uh, so. I think it's kind of it's kind of almost natural. It's making sure if you're in the person, then you, in a room usually say, say you do make contact with maybe if it's more than one person with maybe sort of the main person asking the question. Then you may sort of make contact with the other candidate, the other person, even though they're not asking. You just make sure that 
that you make sort of contact. But yeah, definitely not sort of keep on sort of looking at the sort of person all the sort of the time. It is maybe sort of being natural looking at me. But it's also that sort of thing about maybe not sort of sitting down and reading your notes. It's just like it's probably just sort of thinking about uh, thinking about almost like what you'd expect naturally in sort of conversation that you probably mm -hmm. make some some eye contact you know if, if you're sort of concerned about this or how you're thinking about okay do you make eye contact the right sort of thing you could always ask for a call and say can i do a sort of mock interview with you but i really thought what i do is sort of just sort of think am i doing the right sort of eye contact so that's mm. something you could do can i just um quickly say something so um when they talk about eye contact it's basically um wanting to know how confident are you mm. so you um, as many times as you know you are comfortable looking into their eyes, look into their eyes. That, that tells them that you are confident and you know what you are saying. So um, you don't have to 24-7 throughout the interview time and look into them. No, just look away. Even sometimes when they ask a question and I've not grabbed what they are saying, I just say, excuse me. I take my cup of water while I'm drinking water. I'm thinking of what's the answer to that? So you can just blend in by looking a bit away and come back to them. So ensure that whether you are looking away or you're looking into them, you are confident in what you are saying. Show that confidence. That is the reason for eye contact. I hope that helps. Thank you both. Thank you. And I see I've got a question from Agnes Appelot. Oh, so hope I pronounced it correctly, Agnes. Apologies if I haven't. So I'll, I'll give you a sort of second or two if you're sort of trying to sort of come off mute. Hello. Hi, Hello. yes. Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, what about, for example, um, I kind of suffer from, um, what do you call it, hot flashes. And sometimes when I feel a bit panicky, I kind of tend to, it just comes on, the heat comes. How yeah. do you sort of, I don't know how you handle that in an interview. I think it, it's quite fine to sort of be be honest at an interview. Um, if it's something you, something you may need a sort of reasonable adjustment for, it's then you mention it maybe beforehand, if it's something, or if it's something that is maybe a sort of fate to you at, at an interview, it could be, is actually just sort of, so you could just say something like, okay, I hope you don't mind that sometimes I'm, I'm suffering from hot flashes, so I may need this or that, or maybe you say, I may need to take a minute to think, or whatever it is. I think that's the sort of thing. And it's okay to sort of say, even in an interview, if it's something you sort of think, well, actually, I don't need, um, a reasonable adjustment, but something you need to mention, you could just mention it. Uh, just now, I just come back from having COVID, I got a bit of a cough, and I, it may be something that if I were in an interview just now, say, I, I, I've just come back from COVID, I'm fine, I've got a bit of a cough, so I may at some point need to take a glass of water to, to sort of take that. And the other thing as well, I know you sort of mentioned, you say when I get stressed or get things that I may have a hot flush, you may not even want to sort of say that you may, you may just, you may say, you may want to say, if I could feel a bit nervous, I can find nervous interviews, nervous to get a hot flush, or you could just say, I'm just having these hot flush with occasions, so I may have one during the interview, so. Okay. Yeah, so I would say, um, because you know that happens, preparing way ahead of time, we help you calm those uh, nervousness down. So you know, if you leave it to die minutes, it would hype you up. Then prepare ahead of time so that you are taking care of anything that might make you go into that mode. And as Mudo said, communication is key. Once you get an interview, communicate it. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid to communicate it and say, this is me, so I will need them so that they know ahead of time and they are not they are not surprised. Hope that helps. Okay, thank you both. Yeah. All right, thank you. I see there's a couple of sort of questions. Uh, Zahida was asking, can you use the same example in the behaviour of adaptation expanding in more detail? Most often than not, yes, we expect you to use it because the example has probably been good enough to sort of score. If it's got a four or a five, then yes, it is. You're sort of there and you can expand on it. So it's probably usually a good example. Um, 
And I think there's something else. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. Just sort of, there, was, there was another quick question. Yes, there's a question about that during sort of an interview, you're sort of, is recording, you're sort of timed, and suddenly the question didn't do it, and it sort of felt a bit of panic. So, how, how do you feel? I think the only thing I could suggest is even though the time's on a clock, is actually just take that minute or so to sort of think, um, or however long it always feels longer than it is. Uh, and even as a, like a recorded one, and you could always just say, all right, I am just sort of thinking of my answer. I, I will do it. And I think even though you take that time to sort of think, even though time's one, don't worry about the time running away because usually you'll have a few minutes. I think it's probably better just to sort of take that time to think before answering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I just, so what I usually do when it's a recorded interview, you already know it's going to be maybe two minutes or three minutes. So my competencies that are prepared, I would ensure that I've said it like five, ten times to hit that mark, two minutes. You are putting all the important information within that two or three minutes. So you are not missing out things. So it's better you prepare ahead uh, two minutes to wrap up one competency. So three minutes, I guess, to wrap up one competency. That will help you. Next one, Mudo. People yeah. are raising hands. People are raising hands. Did you see? Oh, I just have a, had a couple of sort of questions up. Um, any tips when you're notified interviews in seven days' time? What to sort of focus on? I think it is about just sort of preparing for the the interview, as as we said before, making sure you know your examples, make sure you know that. Uh, what examples are tailored to what, what the interview is. Any tips on staying staff or your brain always wanders off around about the T and the A, so never finish strongly. Possibly the ADHD thing for yourself. Thank you for Lisa being so honest. It's possibly there's a, probably a, a couple of things. It is maybe sort of doing doing a bit of practice. It's maybe doing the cue cards and perhaps it's also being being it could well be being honest with the interviewers, just saying, uh, I've got got ADHD, so I've just got to adjust, make sure I, I adjust things for it. It may be, for example, that I don't know whether, as you say, it, it wanders off, you don't see the result, is whether actually someone giving you a, a one minute or two minute warning would really help to make sure that, that you have that come back with, with the star result. I hope those sort of things help couple of questions um, and a couple of ones come up. So I've seen Madeleine, you've got a question. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, I don't know if, if it's a bit cheeky, but is it possible to ask how you scored at the SIF? Um, because you mentioned earlier that um, it's okay to use the same examples on your application yeah. form, but then if they're not actually too well scored on the SIF, you wouldn't want to rehash those. So I don't know, is it okay to ask what you scored for the individual behaviours before the interview? My my experience of sort of SIFs is you usually get the the ex you usually get the um, the SIF scores uh, back as well on the form for each each experience for each behaviour. If obviously if it's sometimes where the cover behaviours in just a personal statement, you will only get one um, one score for the statement. Perhaps my sort of tip would be is so you should you should get your feedback in the separate behavioural questions. My tip is if if you're if you're in any doubt, is if you get yourself either maybe find yourself a sort of mentor, then you can work with them to discuss what your examples are like, and particularly they can help you prepare and help you prepare behaviour examples, and then also maybe give you a mock interview. So hopefully that that will help. It's probably it's possibly unlikely you you're going to actually get maybe specific feedback on the SIF before the interview. Though one of my thoughts would be is if you've got to the SIFT and probably what you've put down down is sort of is good or is sufficient. OK, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. 
Uh, and is it, sorry, I say it's, is it Augustine? I don't know, it's, your name's been truncated on my screen. So Augustine Anofo? Anofo? Yeah. Hello. Sorry, Gina, if I mispronounce your name. Um, um, good afternoon, Meda. Good afternoon, Sola. Uh, my question is, good afternoon. Um, what do you call, um, the roles that I've, I've been doing recently have been so varied and different, yeah? Yep. But um, yep. in order to develop yeah. myself, I have an interest in HR. So I yep. just wondered how I can tie the roles in HR with what I'm doing now. You know, how can I, you know, when it comes to the examples and things like that, I've done many different things and I put the examples yep. of what in the past, but I'm like, how do I tie in what I'm doing now to the role I want next in terms of a higher grade? Do you understand what I'm saying? I I actually think a sort of tip I would sort of give a couple of things I would do is there's two things you can do. There's one thing if, if you're really keen that HR is a role you can do, or for anyone if you're keen this is a particular area you're going, is yeah. if you know someone that works there, yeah. is perhaps you could in that sort of area you could actually ask saying this is where I'm keen. Is there anyone in that area that be willing to be my mentor? And then oh, by having okay. a sort of mentor. They yeah. can talk about what skills and experience you have yes. and then they can also sort of work and say okay what can you use to sort of talk about your skills or whatever if maybe you can't get a mentor even if you could have like a, a, ha a half hour chat an hour chat with someone for yeah. example one of my one of my managers was in becoming a, a project manager a new project manager set up a time which actually sat down and chat with his project manager yeah. and they talked about experience and the person was saying well actually you've got this experience you just need to sort of phrase it this way and that way so it's either a mentor or even what i'd say a half hour an hour coffee chat with someone yeah. in that area may very well help okay oh i'll consider that thank you very yeah. much Madame. thank you, thank you. I'm so sorry to cut across you. My name is Brenda Mutu. I'm a colleague from DWP uh, working in HR. Can I give a quick response to the uh, colleague who just spoke, if that's OK? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you. So uh, in terms of um, sort of HR examples, what I would say is get involved in anything that relates to people in your area now, whether that's things like off the back of the people survey or getting involved in any learning initiatives, but also DNI work as uh, the race network uh, here has brought us together. And then also try and apply for business management roles. These are generalist roles that may be working to leaders in the HR space. That's how I entered HR and then looked at developing from there. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. Well, that's great. That's thank, you. thank you very much, Brenda. Uh, I think we've got now she, Sheba Islam Voice. I hope I've got that correct there. Apologies if I haven't. No, that's fine. Thank you. Hi, both. Um, it's just a question around where we where there's the statement of suitability. And obviously you try and give your strongest examples there and match the role. Does it does it go against you to use those examples within interview? No, it, no, it doesn't. We quite often commonly expect people to sort of use those examples again. So it it, it doesn't. The only tip I'd be, be having is make sure, as I said before, that you've you've got um, more or backup examples. And I'm, not, and I'm yeah. not actually sort of saying that sort of sense that if in your personal statement that you've mentioned a lot of a lot of different examples, mm -hmm. for example, as well as mentioned a couple of big main examples that you have to think of additional ones. However, you've got your couple of big main examples, you may want to think about something else. And all I'm just sort of thinking about is, for example, you know, they're, they're talking about something about leadership, you talk about that, and maybe the, an interviewer says, yeah, and can you give me another example of leadership? Okay. I've, yeah, I've heard of someone that actually went for an interview about behaviour questions and actually they were asked one behaviour question about one behaviour, then they were asked another question on the behaviour. So I think the back of examples helps. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I've got one more question, but I'll, I'll, let, I'll let somebody else ask because it's just around the oh, statements. It, it's fine if oh. you want to ask the question as well. So in terms of the statement, uh, statement of suitability, would you say that it's best in terms of structuring it, it's just structuring it against all the essential criteria in terms of those as almost bullets to address the, the points that you need to cover off, 
or is it better to have it in terms of almost like the behaviors and try and match that up in terms of the examples that you cover off within your statement? I think a statement suitability, I'd say it's almost like an exam question. It's looking what what they're asking and usually they will sort of say uh, what what they're wanting. Um, usually it'll sort of say, can you de quite often say, shall you demonstrate how you fit the job role and essential criteria? And I would definitely say, yeah, if that's the case, then it is sort of showing off about each essential criteria, make sure that you demonstrate each essential criteria. Yep. Now, with quite, o quite often, uh, you know, sometimes it could be a lot of essential criteria. Don't worry if, for example, it says, let's say examples of, let's say, OK, we expect people to have experience of leading teams. We expect people to have management experience. Now, you may not have to think, that one is you may not think, well, actually, you don't need to have two examples, one showing leading and one management. You could have one example that covers both of them as well. Yeah. Which shows the depth of it. Look, look, and, look and see and sort of t tailor it, but definitely if it says the, what's meeting the essential criteria, supposed to be the job, make sure that you do sort of cover all the essential criteria. Okay. And, and the other thing is, as I said, sometimes we, we do lack confidence. Uh, for example, it says essential criteria, experience of, you know, financial experience. And you're sort of thinking, oh, I don't have experience in finance, but mm -hmm. actually do the books for your local charity, then actually use that. Use it as a criteria. Or the other things, no harm in actually, if you're in any doubt, I was in, looking in a job with Scottish Government and it was a policy job. And most times I said they wanted policy experience. I phoned the person. Actually, do you need someone's got a policy experience? Said no. What we're looking for are people with this role. We people can develop that experience. So there's no harm in. Sometimes you're a bit unsure. There's no harm in asking the job holder. At the very worst, they can say no. Brilliant. Thank you. That's really helpful. Yeah. Um. And I see, Zaid, what question we could recommend we ask the panel at the at the end of the interview. I think there are sort of questions that you'd like to find out about the job. Uh, quite often, people will ask, "What are the development? What are the development opportunities? Um, you know, what are the chances of a promotion? What is the training?" Some people may ask, want to ask, "What uh, what we expect to do on sort of day one or when you start?" So it's difficult to see what sort of questions are. But if you, if you're really sort of stuck for a sort of question, things like what is, what is the training? What are the development opportunities? These are good ones because then the develop, development opportunities to find out, OK, is this a role that's going to lead on further, which developed my career? What is the training? Then it's about finding, OK, am I going to get supported? Bit difficult to say specific questions, but a couple of examples hopefully will help. Yeah, and I think, think we've probably covered everything. I see Justin is just wanting to sort of do is um there's uh now is there any good tip for those at neurodiversity condition disability i'm afraid i'm not an expert on sort of neurodiversity so i can't answer in specifics i think for yourself you do know how to sort of manage your sort of condition. So I think know what you need to do. However, if there's something you need as a reasonable adjustment, it's going and sort of speaking to, um, you know, sort of spe speaking to the, the panel in advance to say what you need. If it's something significant or it may be, if it's something milder, it's maybe just sort of something that, that you have to sort of mention it. It could be, I think one of my colleagues that I, I was actually doing a bit of a mock interview. She said she had to write down the questions before she answered them, and she was a bit neurodiverse, and that's one of the things. So I think it is know what, no understand and know what what you need, and then actually sort of go and sort of request it. And there's no harm in sort of going in advance and saying, "I've got this sort of condition. This is sort of the thing that I need in advance." Uh, and how how you you word to pick me statement at the end of the interview? Uh, I would sort of think if you're sort of thinking about something, think about two or three sentences. It's probably to answer the question: 
why are you the best person for this job role? I think that's probably it's called like an elevator pitch. So it's just something about maybe sort of selling yourself. So that that's my hot tip. It's two or three sort of sentences. What you can always do is if you sort of think about pick me statement, it could be you sort of do that and you can always sort of practice it with a colleague, with a friend, with a mentor as well. So, and it is if you've got two or three sentences, but it'll be about 30 seconds of time. I've seen it being done in an interview and it felt very natural as well. I know we've got a wee bit over time, however, it felt important to sort of cover the questions. I th think we've covered every sort of question that, that's been answered. Uh, I must admit it's been really great to have such good, interesting, challenging questions and such good feedback. And Justin, thank you very much for allowing us to come along long today. No, so can I just personally say thank you very much, Modo. Thank you very much, Sola. For people who in the audience or the virtual audience who who may not realize, but we had run uh, another session previously, which Modo was in. And Murdo, I had mentioned the same thing in the chat. I said, if anyone's interested in, in using our platform to help provide support and tips and knowledge to people, please volunteer. And you were one of the first people who volunteered. You then introduced me to Sola and look what's happened. No disrespect to anyone, but we've gone way over time. But we've gone over time because you can all see that regardless of whatever department, partner organization, non-departmental public body, et cetera, et cetera, where you are based, these kind of things are not naturally provided. But yet we need this. We need to understand the interview process. We need to understand how best to present ourselves in the virtual room and the physical room. And we also as well need to understand what do interview people actually look for? Like the interviewee people. And it's so much confusion where I think why some of us sometimes are not as successful as we could and should be. So I want to personally thank both of you for doing this presentation. I also as well want to say to everyone else, apologies for some people who were unable to get the link I'm still not sure, um, but for those who were able to get in, do one thing, tell your friends what we are trying to do, because we are doing these things for you. We are giving up our lunch times. We are giving up our working times to help you. And the least each and every one of you can do is provide a big round of applause, please, to Moda and Sola, saying thank you, and then go and spread the word. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Any any final words from our two amazing guest speakers? <laughs> you yeah, want to go just, first, Mado? Yeah, just thank you for coming. I think it's one of the key things we want to come along. I think one of my experiences doing as a mentor is this. It's sometimes about developing confidence, developing people's capability. And that's why we really came along here to help develop your, your confidence. Uh, you know, people is I'm a sort of gay man, uh, and as part of that, as maybe not part of the mainstream, there can be a lack of confidence issues there, and that's why I think I want to come along here as well today to help sort of build the confidence because the civil service gains you're all talented. If we can get the talented right people in the place by developing confidence, that helps. So that's me. That's what I want to say. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. I will say thank you very much for coming on the call. I want everyone of you on the call to know that you are special and you are unique. I want you to believe in yourself. Don't let anyone talk you out of yourself. You can do great things. You have great potentials in you. So that great you are eyeing, go for it. Don't settle for less. You want to move great up, go for it. You can get it. Set a goal. Focus on it and work through it. Write your competences. If I were you, 
from today, everything I'm doing in this current role, write it down. Every of your experiences, whether it's good, whether it's bad, write it down. Your challenges are a competency for you to show that this is how I come out of these challenges. So write it down and pursue your goal. You can do it. So thank you for coming on the call. I feel I feel guilty having to say I'm sorry, everyone. We're going to have to stop this. Um, but it's, I, I want to just remind everyone who's still here, who once again has given up their time. I understand being a civil servant at the moment is quite a difficult thing. I understand that each and every one of us who sees the stories on the media, who come into offices or don't come into offices, may be worried because, like everyone else. We are all being affected by high energy bills, by increase of food costs. But what I would like to say to each and every one of you, and this is just on the back of what Sola said and Murdo said, like we are all together. And the only way we're going to help each other is by opening up, understanding who are there for you to support you, take that support, and then go and replicate that support. And let's be honest, we understand that there are some people who are only concerned about themselves, but that doesn't mean that you have to be. So I would just say, take a moment of what you've learned today, even if it's only one thing, and share that with someone else. Because the only way we're going to survive in all of this negative noise is by being together and by helping other people. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who's, as I said, spent time with us today. There will be more building our capability sessions there will be more sessions coming from the civil service race forum um cheeky plug we're also as well doing an ses masterclass, which is for everyone but what we do with those ses master classes are is get a good ses speaker someone who's personable someone who you feel comfortable with and get them to either share their journey, get them to share some tips and hints about how we can also become better civil servants. So if people who are still here don't mind, I'm going to quickly drop that into the chat box and then I'm definitely going to let them know. Um, same thing like all of our other events, they're always free, they're always inclusive, anyone can come to these events. So if you feel like you've learned something today, as I said, I really appreciate if you can share what you've learned today, if you can share how you felt today, and if you can continue to help other people. So I'm going to drop that in, and then I am definitely let you go. Also, to a clear in whether we're going to up. Yes, we will record. I'm going to record and upload it later on tonight. If you already follow us on the Civil Service Race Forum, either on any of our socials, you will be notified. If you're not notified, then just message us and we will send it to you. Take care, everyone. Have a lovely afternoon. Speak soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank, you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.